And now some more first flight American rules action from the Stuber Classic in February 22. We're on court 10 at the National Croquet Center in West Palm Beach. Leading off with blue is Jane Helms, a seven handicap player from Oklahoma City. Your videographer for this series is Paul Newbecker. Background noise is provided by the Palm Beach Airport, less than a mile to the north, and Summit Boulevard, just on the other side of that hedge. Blue out of bounds by hoop two is pretty common in first flight because that's its hoop. But in championship flight, where attacking is more inevitable, blue ends up in corner one or corner four far more often. Playing red is Lovejoy Durier, also a seven handicap. She's from West Hampton on Long Island, as well as West Palm Beach. You may have seen some of her croquet-themed lovely and entertaining artwork in USCA publications. First T jitters conquered once again. Jane's partner playing black is Carl Arcanyaco, also from Oklahoma City. His handicap is five. And Lovejoy's partner playing yellow is David Kepner, a six handicap who I think plays at the, the NCC. So all four balls are in the game. No out game today. He gives red a nice rush to blue and black should they stay together, but Jane's having nothing of it since she's not in position to attack with black. Where yellows rush more directly at blue and black, it would be fun to rush red out of bounds and make them separate. But in this situation, that would have left yellow out in the center of the lawn. So David gets out of bounds. They'll regroup and hope that blue and black go first, in which case they can take advantage of any mistake at hoop two. Standard tactical thinking, don't risk an attack until your opponents have made themselves vulnerable. Works pretty well so long as your opponent is not likely to attack you with both balls on the boundary. In championship flight, red will either stay where it is or maybe even go to corner one so that there's not a croquet out opportunity and the attack is difficult. Here, because black has a rush on blue to those two balls, this is almost a tice. She's 
inviting him to attack, hoping that he messes it up. The general rule is to attack before you make your hoop in case you mess up at the hoop. But if the hoop's easy, then doing it this way works too. Typical dilemma, if he leaves blue out there, yellow has a three ball break. So against an opponent that can run breaks, he really has no choice but to accept the partner deadness and attack. You go first after the ball you want to leave behind. In this case, the spent ball red being left for blue to use. Importantly, Blue does not need a rush on red. He only has to get red out a foot or two so that blue can pick it up, and then black goes to yellow. But in trying to put red too far out, he puts black's shot on yellow on the boundary outside his comfort zone, so instead of missing or knocking yellow out and giving him a four-ball break, he's going to get out of dodge and leave yellow a three-ball break. Exchanging Tices and Lost Opportunities is going to be the name of the game today. Now he'll want to cobble together a ball-to-ball -ball break, maybe pick up black off the north boundary. But first he has to make the hoop, so sweep all those tactical cobwebs out of your mind and f focus on step one. Well, that'll sweep out the tactical cobwebs. So he left Lou an opportunity, but it's with the danger ball red, so it's likely that she won't do anything more than make hoop two unless she uses red to attack yellow, which is pretty aggressive. While Jane's setting up this hoop shot, I want to thank the USCA for sponsorship. We are now the official YouTube channel of the USCA, as you may know. This tournament is named for Chuck Stuber, who built the National Croquet Center, and it's put on by the Croquet Foundation of America, which is separate from the USCA.
Who too must be said a little wide. Now it's getting interesting. So with black up on the north boundary, dead on red, and yellow in the position to take care of blue, Lovejoy can afford to set up with red. They could leave black right there and try to sack David into attempting hoop three off the boundary, but that makes it easier for blue to join up with black, certainly. All balls are for hoop three now, and off camera, Black just gave Blue a rush to its hoop. This is a perfect opportunity for a driver's stop shot so that black gets on down the lawn while blue sets up for the hoop. Doing it with a roll shot like this means she's either going to have to leave black at red's hoop three or attack after blue makes hoop three. Black is live on the spent ball yellow, so it could be made to work, but it would mean taking on a lot of deadness. So now red has a laid three ball break. Uh, the curse of the open court for you tennis players.
impressed that you're filming first flight. <laughs> well, uh, I talked about it with Russ, and I think sometimes that provides good opportunities for newcomers oh, to learn. See how the sixes and sevens play. Well, it's probably a lot closer to the games that they play. Yeah. Um, so. So you don't watch... learn anything from watching the minus two run the court. Yeah. That's the way you do it. And now because black is partner dead, red has what's called deadness rotation. She could just get out of bounds here and yellow would have time to join her because black can only attack with a long shot. But she's electing to attack those balls on the boundary instead. Now the best way for blue and black to take advantage of what red just did is for black just to go to hoop four. And then blue has a three ball break because yellow is two turns away from making hoop three. But perhaps because black is two ball dead and doing this prevents yellow from setting up for its hoop three, Carl's gonna focus on making his hoop instead. A legitimate choice, but Nonetheless, another lost opportunity. Yellow is live on red and black, and yellow is for hoop three. How do I say this nicely? That shot had an incalculable risk-to-reward ratio. And here, a little more vigorous rush might have allowed David to do a split shot and send red down long, pick up black, and get a break going, but... Failing that, since he does not have a hoop for a pioneer, he just wants to get black out of the hoop, preserving its deadness, make the hoop himself, and maybe set up something for red. We do this all the time, have the opponent watch this shot. But if this is your club championship, you're better off to have it neutral party do the watching because once you ask them to watch you're giving them the power to make the decision about whether your turn is over or not no worries there and one of the real rewards of this sport is the level of trust between the players that makes self-refereeing possible
Blue is guarding hoop four, so he can't just set up in front of four with yellow after he gives black to red. So theoretically, he was planning on bumping black, doing a really thick takeoff, which would have sent black over to red and giving him two shots to make hoop four. Bouncing black into wired position didn't help because now he has to move black. And that thick takeoff might still work. Otherwise, you just got dead on black with no reward. You don't rotate the danger ball to set up something for your partner because what danger ball means is that it plays next. So it's not going to be wherever you put it at the end of this turn. You do this to make some hay with your own ball. Two shots to go make your hoop, some kind of attack, whatever. And now unless she makes her hoop, both opponent balls are dead on black, which will allow black to set up in front of hoop three and get clean. That's gotta be a ties. Might have been better just to give yellow a rush to hoop four. Because now blue's going to have a three ball break unless yellow can bust it up. That's Bobby Durier, Lovejoy's husband, keeping the board. Sadly, he passed away on Christmas Eve this last year. The two of them have been a much beloved anchor for croquet in Long Island and West Palm Beach for years. She will soldier on by herself now. Recognizing, of course, that leaving red there gives blue a pioneer for her three ball break. He's either going to rush red to hoop five and keep going or just roque red and attack those balls on the boundary.
in going for blue first made me think he was going to try to get behind black and make hoop five. But he decided that would be too risky, so he's just going to break up blue's opportunity and make the board more colorful. So yellow avoided getting three ball dead and goes to position on the south boundary for a line shot on his hoop five. Reading Bobby Durier's obituary gave me an inferiority complex. He truly excelled at a number of things that I'm interested in, sailing, fly fishing, photography, among others. The only thing he was average at was croquet, where he shared a seven handicap with Lovejoy, but their shared passion for the sport was unparalleled. He probably didn't drink beer much, but when he did, I'll bet it was Dos Equis. Broken record time again. She's going to hit a roll shot here because she feels it gives her more control in setting up for the hoop. But if she would practice hitting a drive shot here, that would put red down by the peg and let her continue her break to hoop six. But giving her the benefit of the doubt, maybe she did it on purpose because she wanted to go after yellow. Black is still for hoop three, live only on yellow, the spent ball. This is still awfully aggressive. Score is tied. She's going to get opponent dead in order to send yellow to black, but yellow is going to have to give black a rush to hoop three for all that deadness to yield any reward.
pretty good result from that far away and perpendicular to the approach line to the hoop. I'm sure red and blue check for a wire here because red is only live on blue and blue is responsible for red's position. She could just as easily have just stayed where she is. This doesn't accomplish much because she's dead on both of those balls and both of those balls are dead on her. Notice he doesn't stalk this at all. Common cause for missing short row K's as well as a hard cut rush. He even missed it on the wrong side. Once again, an opportunity for red this time. Make four, rush yellow to five, and you got a three ball break. The board hasn't changed, just a reminder of where we are.
That's Stuart Price striding toward the board. His sponsorship is helping put this video up. He's from Tulsa. And Carl is from Oklahoma City, but has played a lot in Tulsa where the lawns are relatively slow. I wonder if that's affecting his play here at the NCC where things are pretty quick. With no hoop six pioneer, but black sitting out by hoop three, he might want to consider giving red to black or vice versa. Blue's over by hoop one. In general, if the opponent has significant deadness, meaning partner deadness, you don't make one back unless you have a break because you're going to give them a clearance. But here, it's a close game. Every hoop counts. They're down by a hoop, and black can't use blue anyway, so they might as well get on with it. And now, shooting at the danger ball doesn't accomplish anything and she correctly changes her mind Pretty good distance control, giving yellow a rush back to its hoop six. And likewise, blue a rush on black to two back. Looks like he was planning this attack from the get-go, because he certainly could have rushed red closer to hoop six. That's a pretty long takeoff to the attack, but nicely done. 
You know, he wants to leave blue behind and use it to get a rush on black to hoop six. So he attacks blue first. I encourage no deadness on blue, but it's a small consolation, I'm afraid. It looks like they never marked yellow the striker ball in, which they should have done. So technically, this is misplaced position. They ignored it, and it didn't really make any difference anyway. Because no matter where he marked yellow back in, the outcome would have been the same. Blacks for hoop three. She's from Oklahoma City where the courts are fast. She doesn't play a lot in Tulsa, so that doesn't explain that. Black is dead on red, so she can take a shot at that double target with no risk. And if she misses, then she's in position to keep blue from setting up in front of two bag. For once, the furniture was helpful. So he's up by a hoop. Does he get dead on the danger ball for a two-shot, 65-foot attempt at hoop four? Or does he join blue for regrouping in a rush to hoop four or an attack if yellow and red join up? There's a couple of takeaways from this next shot. After Carl gets all distracted by looking at the board and talking over tactics with Jane, he never starts over. Stop, restock the shot, clear your mind. And he almost, but not quite, walks through the shot. But no deadness. Blue and black have a two-shot lead with something like five to ten minutes left. Obviously, Carl didn't put black there intentionally. 
He just ended up there when he missed blue, but he gave red a three ball break. It would be nice if red were a little bit closer to black so as not to displace it too much. But yellow is a great one back pioneer for a three ball break. I think they're acknowledging the one minute warning. That was game time, so red is first ball in last turns. And Jane took the one back clearance for blue. And red and yellow are up by one. Red couldn't just get out of bounds because black was sitting there to take advantage of yellow. She'd like to get a rush on black toward her hoop two back and leave yellow a realistic hoop shot at six. But even when you have such specific goals for both balls, it's probably still better for most of us to prioritize one over the other. 
In this case, that would have been making sure that red had its rush on black straight toward two bang. She misses that hoop shot, it's over, because black just goes to blue. Blue has a pioneer and a three ball break to finish in last turns. And yellow's going to be shooting at balls on the boundary in that case. So red has to get out of dodge. First and last turns with a one hoop lead. Now Jane can tie it up, and with the relative deadness of the two teams, I would say blue and black are in the driver's seat in the second round of last turns. I'm sure it's obvious to everybody, but this is one place where attack first and then make your hoop doesn't work because she's last ball in the last turns, and they're down by one hoop, so she has to score the hoop to tie it up and then attack yellow to set up something for black. Okay, so she tied it up, makes one more hoop, she wins the game this turn. If not, they go into a second round of last turn. So what she should probably do is tap black, try to get a rush on yellow to three back. Failing that, drop yellow off at five, go back to black, wired from red behind two back because she's not responsible for red's position. That would put black in position to make a few hoops through the easy part of the course and then do a lead that gives yellow nothing to work with. Let's see what she does. Okay, so no rush on yellow to three back. So now she rotates yellow, maybe does a big full roll to three back, hoping to score it. And if that doesn't work, leave yellow there and go back to black.
Uh-oh. She's probably going to want this one back. She's focusing on winning the game now. But it's a long shot, both literally and figuratively. Her two better choices might be either a full roll to three back, as I mentioned before, or do a split shot putting yellow at five and then going back to black. And now a second round of last turns. And because red and yellow are partner dead, I think what Lovejoy is trying to do here is shoot her hoop two back. But what she ends up doing is giving red to black, which should be the end of the game. He gets the brocade. Now he could send red to blue now. But he's going to roll to hoop five, I guess, planning to send red to blue after he makes the hoop. You decide whether that was wise or not. Little too much on the roll, but red's dead on black, so he can set up. But notice he never looks back at yellow. Yellow's only dead on red, but Jane's responsible for yellow's position. So if yellow could see blue, he could have wired black from yellow and still had a hoop shot. Now there's some shooting. I suppose he could go move blue because Jane still has a line shot on three bag, but two shots, make hoop six, go up by a hoop, and then put it all on her shoulders. Because if he makes six, all she can do by making three back is tie, and they just go around again. If you knew nothing about David Kepner and you saw him hit those last two shots, you would estimate his handicap at minus one. So yellow and red are up by one. Blue is last ball in the second round of last turns with a chance to tie it and force a third round of last turns. Jane's husband, Connor, there to give encouragement. So close, in a one-point nail-biter, Durier and Kepner take Helms and Arcanyako in the second round of last turns with brilliant championship-level shooting by David Kepner to finish it off. So thanks again to the USCA and to Stuart Price for their sponsorship. <clears throat> Give us a like, subscribe. That's probably all we're going to do from the Stuber. Hit that notification bell and you'll be notified about what comes next.